When we talk about muscle attachment, one of the things that I have listed in the syllabus for you, there are certain muscles that I want you to know, the insertion, the origin, that sort of thing. So I've listed those in the syllabus along with the muscles that I want you to study and the muscles that I want you to know. And I want you to um, under, know the origins and the insertions. Now, a lot of times, okay, what you're going to find is that the origin will begin on one bone, the insertion to another, and a lot of times they're crossing a joint. Because if we're supposed to have movement, if it was here to here, I, just saying, you know. So usually when we have the muscle attachments, something is usually crossing a joint. Therefore, the reason we need all those bursa that we've mentioned, okay? Because we've got to do something to um, keep the movement smooth or else it would be constantly tearing this tissue and that would be very painful. When we look at how the muscles are in the body, we have some very interesting shapes that exist. Now, hmm, let me look at this for a second. How is it that they get to take these shapes? Because at this point, a lot of our idea about the cell is still something rounded. Right? A little rounded, squishy, something. But, I mean, but, well, we talked about the cartilage in the bone, semi solid, solid man, blah, 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 blah. Okay? But now I'm seeing circular, I'm seeing elongated, I'm seeing rhomboid, I'm seeing trapezoid, I'm seeing pinnate, I'm seeing all these different shapes of muscles. How am I getting that? It depends on where they're at, but now, what is a muscle cell? Long strands. It's a long string. Now, the best way for me to explain it to you, all right? How many of y'all in here eat meat? <laughs> okay, so this right here is the sartorius muscle. It's the longest muscle in the body. Okay? Right here. Everybody kind of see. Alright? So, my sartorius muscle. Alright? Got this really nice long direction for this muscle, right? If I were to take this muscle and grab one cell that's going to equal one fiber, okay? And so when you hear me say fiber, I mean a cell. And if you hear me say cell, I mean a fiber, okay? Because I'll use them interchangeably. All right, but if I could take it and pick it and pull it up and do this number and hold it, I would be holding one cell. And that one cell, if you remember about skeletal muscle cells, multi-nucleated. Because you take a cell that is this long, all right, that long, would one nucleus be sufficient? No. So our idea now of a cell has to change. 
So the circular, the fibers just simply go in the circle. If it's pinnate, they just simply look like all the feathers. Okay? So our idea about it has to change. Now, the arrangement of the fibers, all right, pretty cool. That's how we're going to get the different shapes of the muscles. And the shapes of the muscles are going to help us understand or they're going to be indicative of where they're found in the body. Now, when we begin to name the muscles, we name them based on location. It could be size. Could be their shape, could be their orientation, could be their origin and insertion, could be the number of heads that are present, or it could be their function, or it could be some combination of any of these. Love this one. Just say that a couple of times. Sternoplytomastoid. I'll never forget when I was talking to somebody and they were doing something like that. pain right here, you know, right here. And I'm like, oh, your sternocleidomastoid must be um, tight. And they look at me and go, supercalifragilist, and go, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay, I remember this. Um, so when we begin to look at the nomenclature, it's usually telling you something. All right, it's going to tell you something about that particular muscle. Like sternocleidomastoid, that's letting me know sternum. We've got the mastoid, we've got the clavicle, okay? We've got areas of the body that are being represented. We've already mentioned, for example, ab and ad, okay? Because you go to the gym, and if you do these particular machines, that's what you see written on the machines. You'll see something adductor, something abductor, okay? Letting you know that whatever part of your body you're working, these are muscles that you're supposed to be affecting because the muscle groups are going to be named that. They're going to have adductors and abductors associated with their name. So the nomenclature, very interesting. When we talk about movement of muscles, when we have muscles, tendons, buttons, and they are acting together, they are giving us what we term lever systems. Because we either move a part of the body or the whole body. So, Right now, moving the whole body. Moving a part of my body. Okay? One of the things I can't do is stay still, and I can't not talk with my hands. If you were to come hold my hand still, I would not be able to talk to you. That just should not give y'all any ideas. All right? However, okay, when we look at the movement, these lever systems. Muscle contraction is going to be what we say is a pull or a force according to the position. So we're going to have a pull or we're going to have a force that we get to create with the skeletal muscles. Now, your textbook goes into great detail about the lever systems, all right? I don't really care about that, okay? Mainly because, like, you know, if you're going to go into one of those specialties, you're going to learn about this. So I'm going to keep it on a very simple level for us. When we talk about these lever systems, the lever is basically what is the bone? What is the bone for that area of the body that we're looking for that movement? 
all right? The fulcrum. Do we have a pivot point that we're looking at? Did everybody see what I did? Okay. What's the weight or the resistance? Basically, do this force of gravity that's existing. And let's face it, gravity makes things heavy. Gives them something for weight. All right, and the weight differs, okay, based on the structure of the item. We classify the levers as either being class one, class two, or class three. When we begin to look at this muscle movement, class one, basically movement is just something that looks like our pivot point directly in the middle, okay? They give the example of nodding the head, okay? What they try to do with the lever system, they are trying to determine mechanical advantages. Now, in simple terms, okay, because like I said, your book gets into great detail about this, all right? My purposes, I don't want to go that deep into it. When I say mechanical advantage, based on what we know about the classes of levers, let's think about a baseball bat, okay? All right, since I don't really have a baseball bat, let me go back to my sartorius muscle, okay? Now, I have a particular height, particular weight, particular grip, okay? So, let's say I'm going to go buy a baseball bat, and I go to the store, and I see that baseball bats are like boom, 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 boom. Not only do they have different heights, they got different weights. All right? And maybe, I don't know, I've been on a team, my coach tells me, all right, look, you need the bat that's going to be 28 inches high, weighs, has a weight of seven pounds, and the grip on it is 18 inches long. Why? Because what's my overall goal in using that bat? I want to hit that ball out the park. I want to be able to stand and go. <laughs> It goes, right? All of these actions, because I'm going to have all these classes of levers going, and based on all the areas of my body that I'm using, I have given myself a mechanical advantage to do that. And to use that mechanical advantage that I've looked at, I've determined what my best source of the tool should be, okay? And that's really what they use a lot of this information for. Does that make sense? I'm not asking you to get really deep into it. Because your textbook is going to take you into some math. And it's going to be like, okay, well, we're going to have the force. And we're going to have the pull. And we're going to have the weight. Blah, blah, blah. We've got to make sure that we're equal to or greater than one. Blah, blah. I'm not asking you to do that. I want you to understand the levers work together to give us these movements in our body. Okay, and then parts, like, you know, the, the bone and the muscle and that sort of thing, all working together. I'm not asking you to get very deep into that. Now, as we move and get into muscle anatomy,
which thing? 